Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome around to <laughs> Sliding Into My DMs, part of the D4 network. This is the show on the network where we talk about D&D news. We talk about D&D rules. Yeah. And we... <laughs> Thanks, thanks for the confirmation. <laughs> and we, and we talk about tips for um, you know having fun when you mm-hmm. play Dungeons and Dragons. All kinds of tips and, and yeah. potty jokes. We yes. got it all. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. jokes. Way too many potty mm-hmm. jokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned. If you didn't notice last time, I've been putting like outtakes into the end, and people I think usually don't <laughs> catch them. In fact, I've even started doing that in my last couple of optimized episodes. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Um, and they're not. They're not like amazingly funny or anything like that. It's just little, just little editing outtakes yeah. that whatever. Anyway, nuggets. Um, little Easter eggs. So yeah, welcome. Thank little you. Little Easter nuggets. Thank you for for being here um, and for watching. My name's Colby, and uh, I'm your host. And with me, as always, I have some of my DMs. Um, we've got Corey the Grand Pooba. We've Hello. got Dallin the Blackthorn Rogers, and Preston Fuzzy Squirrel himself, looking. Fuzzy as ever. Squirrel sounds. I I don't know why. Really as usual. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Like needs to be your nickname. Nickname, like obviously, because that's like your moniker. So today, as always, I want to talk about a couple of things with you guys. I want to talk about a quick ruling first of all, and then um, jump into a longer conversation. Um, that today is all about a recently announced Unearthed Arcana. Mm. But before we get into that, let's discuss... Okay, so for the quick ruling, I want to talk to you guys about the suggestion spell. So for um, the D&D optimized video that I did this week, right over Preston's head there... um, Control Freak? Yeah, the Control Freak. Mm -hmm. Ah. Um... I used a lot of control spells, and <laughs> shocker, <laughs> one of them um, was suggestion. And as I was kind of preparing and then recording and talking about it and thinking about it since, and frankly, lots of the comments too mm-hmm. have been about the suggestion spell. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious to know, like, how far you would let this spell go <laughs> um, at your table, right? Okay. So, Ooh. so. Here's what we read about the suggestion spell. Here's the, here's the finicky bit that I'm interested in discussing with you guys. Among other things, when you cast a spell, you suggest a course of activity limited to a sentence or two and magically influence a creature you can see within range that can hear and understand you. Creatures that can't be charmed or immune. The suggestion must be worded in such a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable. Hmm. Asking the creature to stab itself throw itself onto a spear, immolate itself, or do some other obviously harmful act ends the spell. And so, yeah, it for me, it, it, it begs the question, what is reasonable, right? Um, and that's not spelled out. And obviously, mm-hmm. it's intentionally, I think, left to the DM discretion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so... Love those types of spells. Yeah. The ones that are like, <laughs> your DM will figure I, it out. I hate them. Because I can't, can't optimize, optimize around it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my DM's going to say, and I definitely don't know what your DM's going to say. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so, right, we can't tell them to harm themselves, mm-hmm. but what could we tell them to do? Or, or maybe, I mean, obviously, that, that's too big of a list, but maybe what I want to get at is kind of where do you draw the line? Mm-hmm. So what would not be permissible and why? And so, you know, to me... I. Well, actually, let me do this. I've asked you guys to um, to send me like some suggestions <laughs> uh-huh. as to the suggestion spell, and let me just let me just read them off, read a couple of them off to you, and then you guys tell me, would you allow this? Okay. Here's the deal, though. For me as a DM, I think it depends character to character, mm-hmm. so it's hard for me to give just a definite okay. like yes they would or no you mean uh, when you say yeah. character you mean the, npc the, the or victim. villain or whatever whoever's mm-hmm. the victim of the suggestion spell yeah. i think it varies from okay right creature to creature. why and how what, what's well, going to affect it so like if you said stab your friend or whatever mm-hmm. if it's just like some commoner who's never committed a crime in their life like maybe that won't that's work. not reasonable but mm-hmm. if it's a thief and he's like i really don't like this guy anyways mm-hmm. yeah fine yeah, yeah stab sure him. or, so or you depends. can word it like 
I heard that he stole your cattle, stab right. your friend. You and, know, and, exactly. And, and you should I, stab him. It's important to like role play it, I think, a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Word it and, and it's a sentence or two, we're told, right? Yeah, I think I think context really does matter and I right. think you have to specifically word it for the audience. Okay. So let me let me fire off a few. Okay. Um, walk into the forest at, and don't stop. Or maybe gosh, you're you you know th- this this forest is absolutely beautiful. You should take a walk through the woods and and see what you can discover. Mm-hmm. Right? Permissible. Generally speaking, for most characters, let's not get into too much nitty-gritty here. Yes, no. Yes. Yes. Is the forest on fire? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's that nitty-gritty. That so important. so uh, generally yes, but if it's right. if they know if it's a commoner and they know that the woods like if it's the the you know, the trees are alive at night and they're going to kill you, then no. Right. But yes, generally yes. Okay, how about... I, oh, sorry. Sorry, I want to argue that a little bit because I honestly I honestly think that, like, the suggestion spell comes with magic to make it feel like a good suggestion, mm-hmm. right? So, so I think I think even the commoner that knows that the woods can be dangerous at night might be like, you know what? Yeah, I haven't gone into the I woods for sure. a while. Well, I'm on the other side the of that, and rush. does that make it... St- fire seem like it's less you know okay i want you to go step into the fire i mean that's it, obviously it does specifically say it's self-harm as as type things not right. instantly yeah. but, yeah. but yeah. like so for instance if i'm suggesting this to a child npc and they're terrified of that right and to them it's a very real terror okay. all right. first well, of all you're a madman <laughs> <laughs> stop <laughs> suggesting <laughs> children <laughs> well, no, no, it's like if you put them in those kind of contexts, why am i in combat like, with a child i, yeah. I, I would place. say it would it I mean, would I very guess much it have to be combat <laughs> you know, if if it's you know deeply ingrained in them, but if it's just like, hey, it's a forest, and we go and hunt there all the time, yeah, that's whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, next one. Okay. Uh, it, you you use this against a against a spellcaster. Okay. Um, you know those spell slots are really burning a hole in your pocket. You ought to cast as many of them as you can as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. I'd probably word it a little bit differently, but yeah. Sure. I mean, there's a save associated with suggestions. So, mm-hmm. right. If they so make yes. a save, they don't have to do it. Right. Let me let me get more specific than that. How about um, you should not cast the shield spell, or you should stop. You should stop concentrating on like your mage armor or your shield spell mm-hmm. or something like that because it's it, it's kind of chafing or I don't know. You know, you come up yeah. with, with something. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Right. Yeah, uh, as long as... Shouldn't you be doing something more proactive than just counterspelling every time? Yeah, see? Exactly. Yeah, yeah I like okay. it. I, w- yeah. I would I for sure allow it. I think it would function. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think specifically like locking a specific spell, absolutely allowed. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd yeah. call that creative. Yeah. That's a really good move you know, on yeah. the player's this is, part. This room is full of a lot of gas. You don't want to use fireball. Like, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, okay, here's so here's the one that to you could me, hurt yourself. <laughs> you hurt yourself exactly. And I, I think I think generally speaking, we probably all agree that things that are like, hey, you know, there's a big pile of treasure back at Waterdeep. You should go get it. You know what I mean? Probably for yeah. the most part. Okay, you know, yeah. walk mm-hmm. into the woods, go mm-hmm. on a hike, lie down. You're you're exhausted. You should take a nap. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. I think most people are gonna say, okay, yeah, I'll allow yeah. that. Um, Unless but, like you're in the middle of combat, because then it's like I still think it's a suggestion spell. You're like, I know well, there's a lot it, going but, on, but you know what? I I feel like I should but, take a rest. But yeah. that would, but that would that how how does that differ from something that would harm them, right? So because I mean, because it's not self harm. They fair. they might be in in a dangerous p- situation, but suggestion is suggesting to them that That's this fair. is not dangerous. This yeah. is yeah. an okay like, time to do this. I mean, similar to the command spell, like, hey, I want you right. to grovel. Right. Yeah. I want you to yeah. go from. Exactly. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that they fall asleep. Right. Like, no, just not, well, maybe they just sleep. go prone. They're yeah, just trying to sleep. Yeah. You seem really could tired. You, you should sit down. Could you keep it? Could down? you keep I'm it? Trying yeah. to sleep yeah. over here. <laughs> clang, clang. <laughs> um, the okay. soothing sounds of battle. Here, oh, here's yeah. the one that I think I'm most interested in, and I would assume maybe my viewers as well. Um, your friends are out to get you. And they're planning on stabbing you in the back. You should kill them, you know, or whatever, right? So you, so group of enemies, you single out one of them, and you're like, um, these guys are all going to double cross you. You should fight them or join us, right? You're you're fighting on our side, or maybe there's some cause that you, 
that you're fighting for, right? He's a cultist, you're trying to stop the cult, and the suggestion is, you know, the cult is actually really terrible, and think of all yeah. of the harm that it's done in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, you should join our side and fight your enemies. Is that reasonable? It would depend on the, the way that they worded it, I think. If we're going with the, like, generally, right? Generally, I'd say no, but I think there's enough specific scenarios that it would work. So, again, it kind of depends. But on a general basis, probably not for me. I'd say yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say that the, the will save con there constitutes whether or not they believe what you're saying, sure. right? And somebody who is a villain, typically, usually is, is usually paranoid that the mm -hmm. other ones are going to stab them in the back. Right. So I see, I see that as, a, as an absolute win for you if you're yeah. able to... Uh, yeah. Uh, to accomplish it. However, there are certain situations where, like, if it's somebody who's extremely loyal to their dark master or something, oh, yeah. they might not uh, respect that. And I, I think taking uh, creature intelligence into account is probably also good there. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if it's uh, if it's a goblin, their intelligence aren't usually that good as far as the stat block goes. Right. And that's not to say that individual goblins are not intelligent or anything. I'm not stereotyping. But... Anti-goblin. <laughs> I'm actually anti-goblin. I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, if you're, if you're talking to, like, the second in command to the Dark Lord who's been, like, working his way up through the ranks and really believes the dogma... Mm -hmm. And then you suddenly tell him, like, no, your cult is bad. Like, he might have a, it might be more of a, if he fails the wisdom save, I might say, okay, player, he's a bit too loyal to actually do what you want, but he will have disadvantage on attack rolls okay. for the r sure. remainder until he can save out of it. Or, or maybe you give him advantage on, dis on his saving throw. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, with like you said, with all those like specific scenarios, I'm good with all of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are all it, it's all situational. Like. Sure. And that's what's both interesting and unique about suggestion, and also from a player perspective, I think a little frustrating. Yes. Because like I don't necessarily not like if 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 my DM is going to be like eh, like if everything I throw out as a suggestion is like well it depends it's like. Turns out the guy you suggested that to has a fear of the forest, so it's not reasonable for him. It's like, well, how the hell am I supposed to know that? Like, well, you know, and and that's, that's obviously the risk you run with suggestion. Yeah. However, unless your DM has that written down, yeah, your DM is kind of a dick. Yeah, then yeah. that's <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, So, well, anyway. Okay, cool. Um, I think we've covered the topic fairly well. All right. Am I missing yep. anything? I suggest that we move on to the next topic. Let's move on. Mm. Ooh, counter spell. Really wants to oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We should do a, a commercial break first. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> and we're back. Thanks, sponsors. Thanks, sponsors. Ooh. Um, right. So very recently, we had a an Unearthed Arcana announcement mm -hmm. from Wizards of the Ooh. Coast. Last Friday, I want right. to say. Uh, as of this recording, yes. a few days as ago. This, yeah, dating the recording, here, um, but whatever. Travelers of the Multiverse. Say what? I know. Now, we talked about in our Future of D&D episode we a few did. of the different sets, and one of the ones that I did yes. mention yes. just briefly was, I think I think I got the name right, but Spelljam. Spelljam. Yeah. Which, which is a crazy like one of the crazier ideas that I had during that <laughs> during that session but apparently that's what they're doing first <laughs> okay so yeah it shocks me they're doing that first yeah honestly me too but it is maybe they wanted to do something yeah like, I mean really they've different, got that right? multiverse monster book or whatever they announced oh yeah they, so that's like Morgan it King's seems yeah monsters of the multiverse right. yeah mm -hmm. before we jump into the specifics of the UA itself um, I want to kind of get your guys take a little bit on hmm. what is what is the multiverse as it pertains to D&D &D? what is Spelljammer maybe more specifically for those who don't know I don't really know anything about it frankly mm -hmm. um, I mean when I think of multiverse I think of like the, the Marvel <laughs> you know what I mean like, yeah. like mm -hmm. there's, there's common, yeah. I think yeah. of like the recent Loki show where there's like yeah. timelines and like Variants. it's all very like sci-fi right mm -hmm. in my head and and as some of my viewers know, I tend to recoil slightly when yes. when <laughs> I feel like sci-fi is getting up in my fantasy business. Keep right? yeah, keep the sci-fi um, chocolate like little, out of the fantasy. I, I like science fiction, to be clear. I just don't know that I love it when they mix. I'm not a big fan of Warhammer 40k, for example. Well, you okay. think it's so, salty and sweet, yes. but it's just salty. I, yeah, I, like I, <laughs> I agree with you. Little, actually, just want a little separation. So, so 
I mean, Corey, I'm assuming you probably know better than the rest of us. What do you know about Spelljammer? What can you tell us sure. about it? Uh, yeah, so the Spelljammer setting came out with a D and D. Um, it was a, it was sort of like Planescape. I, I don't know if you've ever. D and D, and I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, it was a specific I campaign was setting and module. Yeah, and you are notorious, as you have said, for not wanting yeah. to play anything. I probably to saw do. it in the hobby store, and I was like, was like mm, yeah, it looks spell. weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to play D and D with lasers, or I don't <laughs> even know if there are lasers in it actually. Um, but uh, for those of you, like, it's similar to Planescape. For those okay. of you who know that one, okay. uh, in that it connects all of the worlds of the uh, multiverse. Now, multiverse is a word that was used um, by AD and D before. I mean, maybe before Marvel really coined it as their mm -hmm. like alternate reality, or sure. or before it was too too well established as like the multiverse law, where it's alternate realities. Um, basically, the multiverse is just the word that they give to different settings that don't exist in so the same universe. So we're talking like Forgotten Realms mm -hmm. versus Faerun versus... So Faerun is Forgotten Realms. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah, it, my they're... Uh, but versus like Greyhawk versus, versus, yeah. versus Dragonlands. Yeah. Dragonlands. Yeah. So, so they're not necessarily alternate realities or alternate mm -hmm. timelines. It's just different locations. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if you were to, in, in the uh, Spelljammer setting, if you were to... Uh, get in some sort of advanced rocket ship if you found it and fly off into space away from Faerun. You would never get to anywhere outside, like any Greyhawk setting or anything. It's not another solar system. Okay. Instead, it's what it is, planet. It's no, just... it's it's a different reality, a different material plane. Got That's it. why the gods are different as well, because okay. they're all kind of contained in what we what they're calling these uh, crystal shells, mm -hmm. typically is what they're called. Mm -hmm. And they're these giant orbs that contain like a solar system's worth of planets and everything, and it deal with one specific material plane. Okay. And specifically, the Spelljammer deals with the material plane only, doesn't have to deal with any of the other planes around it. Um, so I'm not sure exactly, because Planescape goes into more of like planar magic and how they're connected and everything okay. like that. It sounds like a high person's nightmare, by the way. Uh -huh. Yeah, that like scared me a little bit. The way that you could <laughs> well, traverse... Are you saying that you're high right now? No. <laughs> no. Not what neither, we thought. Neither can <laughs> confirm nor deny. Okay. Uh, now, the way that you traverse between these crystal shells, these spheres, is these magical vessels that have a star jammer helm, which mm -hmm. is basically... Or a star jamming helm is what they call it. Uh, which is basically a... Uh, a seat that, that any sort of magic user can sit in and propel using their own arcane might. Okay, that's cool. And they go from uh, they go through this sip, this uh, substance, which uh, forgive me for this name. It's called phlogiston, which is just kind of this <laughs> nebulous arcane magic. Sometimes it's like uh, a specific element. It sounds but moist. It it does because it literally <laughs> contain like it floats or it is everything between the spheres and the spheres actually float in this like a giant oh, yeah. ocean and That's i think cool. i think uh, spell jammers is where the idea of the astral sea being this like big giant uh Open you know space. star spe star sea came about okay but it was that before it was that interesting cool. yeah okay so it not it doesn't necessarily have to be science fiction and i'm sure that there will be plenty of viewers who every time i talk about artifice like to jump in and be like, it's not science. It's no, magic. it's not. It like, absolutely it is not. Freaking is too. It's math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, math can, is math. Can you make a warforged or an airship? <laughs> okay, somebody on this Sophia. earth could. <laughs> they could. Yeah, <laughs> Sophia, that uh, constructs robot. and <laughs> stuff like. Uh, sure, like you can say they're not powered by steam. They're powered by magic. It's yeah. still steampunk. No, it's it's, <laughs> ma it's magic punk. <laughs> Get that magic punk out of here. <laughs> I'm, you guys are playing with the wrong main DM. I gotta tell you, like I love I love right. myself some clockwork, um, and I don't know everything about Spelljammer. Yeah. I've, I've only heard about it in passing. So there might be somebody in the comments that knows more about Spelljammer. Yeah. And I'm has sure like, there will be plenty. Yeah. By the way, the Spelljammer is the most famous spell jamming ship. It is in the shape of a giant manta ray. Oh, yeah. oh cool. Nice. In my head, they're like airships going through space. Like, mm -hmm. like or not airship, like a, like a, I don't know, like a privateer's vessel or something, like going through space. It really depends. There are yeah. there are privateer vessels. They have some that are, like I said, there's a manta ray one. There's, there's like squid ones. There's like ones that have like dragon themes to them and everything. Like it kind of depends on the race that is piloting or making the ship. And it kind of just depends on, you know, what kind of aesthetic you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Right. So now that we've kind of established a little bit of lore, a little bit of background, mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about what was specifically announced in the Unearthed Arcana. And none of it really, you know, well, maybe with one exception, it, it feels super necessarily like science fiction-y. Mm -hmm. Right. To me. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're they're new races, mm -hmm. like all races that get introduced that are maybe part of a different uh, plane in the multiverse. Right. Eberron, you know, et cetera. Uh, depending on your table, depending on what your DM is comfortable with, you might be fine to play a warforged in your Forgotten Realms campaign. Yeah. Right? Or their homebrew world might allow for anything. One thing that I do like to do is if I'm not going to restrict a specific player character, like to a race, I'm, I'm going to wait and hear, and if it's something really cool, I'm going to include it in my world as even more, sure. like, right. they're going to be more prevalent, you yeah, know? Right. Yeah. All right, so let's just go through and talk about the, the six new races that are announced thus far. Now, as we've seen, not all announced UA actually makes it into the game, <laughs> or maybe it will make it in at a later I point, mean, right? All that fey stuff, I mean, we only got... Yeah, we did that Fey Folk episode, Zoop. and and then only ended up with the fairy and the rabbit folk, which were actually renamed. Too. So, but but let's talk about them because I think they're kind of fun. I think they're kind of cool. Yeah. I'll start with the elf, of course. Hmm. Eye um, roll. It's a special <laughs> elf. <laughs> yeah. So the astral elf. So uh, all of the races get a plus two into one ability and a plus one to, into right. uh, an ability. Yeah, J just like er all of the stuff just, that they've been doing yep, recently is. with yeah. UA, they kind of have this bit where they're like, ability score increases. Mm -hmm. Plus two, plus one, wherever you want. Um, creature type, they talk about, you know, most are humanoids, but you might get some that aren't, and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, you know, yeah. all these kinds of things. Um, and, and in fact, we have quite a few not humanoids yeah. in here. Yeah, so Astral Elf, long ago, Groups of elves ventured from the Feywild to astral to the astral plane to be closer to their gods. Life in the Silver Void has imbued their souls with a spark of divine light. That light manifests as a starry gleam in an astral elf's eyes. Hmm. So astral elves, they're 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 very similar to like standard elves in in many many ways, right? You get things like dark vision, you get the same kind of move speed, you're a humanoid, fey ancestry, keen senses, like you don't need to sleep, you can't be put to sleep, all of those kinds of yeah. things are, are the same, which is great. There are a couple of unique things though, astral fire, um, you know one of the following cantrips of your choice, dancing lights, light or sacred flame. I love this. Intelligence, wisdom, or charisma is your spellcasting ability for it. Nice. Right? And, and this That's just nice. goes back to kind of what we talked about when we were when we did the episode on um, the future of D and D, right? Um, which is, I, I really, I really think that when when five point five comes out or whatever they're going to call it, right? I think they're going to retool pretty much every race to be this way to just allow you to have a little more flexibility. Mm -hmm. In the past, you know, elves, it's like, well, if you get a cantrip or you get a spell, intelligence is your spellcasting ability for it. And now yeah. we're told, well, right. you know, no, you might want to be playing a sorcerer and pick this race. Right. And so we're not going to penalize you. That's let, cool. you know, let it be charisma That's nice. or whatever. Um, yeah, you'll see that with the uh, multiverse monsters, the Morton Cain's multiverse of monsters. Yeah. They said they were going to be re redoing a bunch of races in right. there. So right. I'm sure we'll see a lot of oh, that. Oh, right. Not 5.5. Mm -hmm. Not 5.5. That's, 5. Right. that's yeah. right. Yeah, coming yep. in sooner. Yeah, that's good. Coming that's okay, so we got, we got Radiant Soul, your typical, like, you're an elf, you get a cantrip. Well, no, that's uh, Astral Fire. Oh, Astral, Astral Fire. Fire. Radiant Soul is the the really powerful ability. Yeah. When you succeed on a death save. Just a success. Succeed <laughs> on a death save. So you go unconscious, you make your first death saving throw. You can regain a number of hit points equal to your proficiency bonus plus your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma modifier. Choose when you select this race. Um, you can only do it once per long rest, but... Dang. That's really that, good. That's, that's a, a free healing spell, like when you die. Just like, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it sounds to me like um, that scene in Lord of the Rings Two Towers where Gandalf is laying on top of the mountain and he just goes, <gasps> you know, yeah. like, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, yeah. I mean, because <laughs> the half orc Gandalf has. A radiant soul. The half orc has something similar, but this is even better. Well, like, ha half orcs yeah. have, like, the undead thing where. Similar to the undead, to the zombie thing. Yeah, like, like you, you get knocked back, down yeah. to zero, you, you can, can pop up. You exactly. can not. You can go to one instead yeah. of zero, yeah. which, yeah. in some ways, is better because you don't spend a turn making a death saving throw. You're just like, ah, nope, I'm not dead. But this is like you li literally negate 
death once. Right. And yeah. so I guess initially when I read it, I'm like, oh, that's overpowered. And after I've thought about it a little bit more, I'm like, you know what? I mean, it's not that. If unbalanced. they didn't have the limitus nice. on there, then yeah, I think that would be overpowered. But oh, the fact that sure. it's once per long rest. I mean, granted, most I feel like campaigns, unless you're in like the death throes at the end of the campaign mm-hmm. or something, you're going to have probably a long rest between combats or something yeah. mm-hmm. close yeah. to how it, much so. how, how often do you drop to death well, saves? How, and, how, how often know? do yeah. you Not drop to often. zero in a day? Right. And then also, and don't have somebody that can pop you back up right. with a healing yeah, word or a cure that. wounds or a, or a healing potion or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, um, you have to make the save. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. still yeah. you're still subject yeah. to your three failures. Right, rule. but if you get in your second you, one and succeed, then yeah, right. it's, it's pop back yeah, up. So I, I, don't cool. think, I don't think that's too overpowered at all. No, I think no. it's fun. I think it's a fun ability to show, like, not resilience, but, like, maybe like an otherworldly presence that's helping you along. I expect you know? all the healers from here forward to have this. So well, that way if they yeah. go down, we don't have to worry yes. about this. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the, I think this is <laughs> the most powerful on someone who sees themselves the as a support yeah. Yeah, healer. Exactly. You don't have to be like, well, okay, we're fine oh, if crap. we go down, went down. But if he goes down, yeah. we're, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Right? It's like, oh no, he's an astral elf. Absolutely. We'll be fine. Yep. Um, once per day. <laughs> after that, after that, you gotta have a rest. <laughs> um, the only other thing, trance proficiencies. This is actually kind of cool. You finish a long rest. Uh, you gain two proficiencies, each one with a weapon or tool of your choice. Or oh, sorry, each one with a weapon or tool of your choice. Um, that's that's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, so most is that elves, interchangeable? Most elves will get like uh, proficiency with a certain set of mm-hmm. you know weapons, for example. Yeah. Nice to have the, some flexibility there. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, that's the Astral Elf. Yeah, it's interchangeable every long nice. Yeah, every long so that's, you can swap it That's out. cool. Yeah, I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's see, Corey. All right, enough talking about elves. Get out of my way. It's time let to me, talk about let, something amazing. Let, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably my least favorite. Uh-huh. One. I know. <laughs> 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 I'm going to read clocks. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to read this. I'm just going to read the first paragraph. Auto gnomes are mechanical beings built by rock gnomes in their image, usually with a particular purpose in mind. For example, a gnome might build an auto gnome to be a steadfast colleague or a loyal companion. Sometimes, because of a malfunction or a unique circumstance, an auto gnome becomes separated from its creator and strikes out on its own. Number Whoa. five is alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, you get your Johnny Fives. Basically, we get the small version of the Warforged here. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing <laughs> I do want to point out, because we were talking about it, the internal components used to, uh, in an auto gnome's manufacture can be can vary widely. One auto gnome might have an actual beating heart in its chest, mm-hmm. uh, while another might be powered by stardust or intricate clockwork. So it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Like You can make it whatever you want. But uh, I actually I actually went through uh, this. By the way, you can live up to 500 years old, which mm-hmm. is nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, but I went through this and I compared it to the Warforged because it is kind of very similar. Sure. Uh, your size is small. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a construct, not a human, which is different That's from the Warforged. Important. Because yeah. Warforged are humanoids, are and humanoids. they specifically right. are considered, you know, heartbeat and everything. Targetable yeah. by hu- and, by hold person and other spells versus mm-hmm. where this one you can't. Yeah. and and and. That's Healing important wound. because you also can't cast Cure Wounds on a Construct. Uh-uh-uh. Or he- but you can on an Auto Gnome. Uh, uh, under <laughs> the True Life, if the Mending Spell is cast on you, you can expend a hit dice, roll it, and regain a number of hit points equal or equal to the roll plus your Constitution That's- modifier. In addition, oh. your creator designed you to benefit from common spells that preserve oh. life but that normally don't affect Constructs. Including cure wounds, healing word, ah, and spare the dying. That's easy mode. Mm-hmm. That's OP. Obviously. We need to penalize anybody trying to put clockwork in the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right when I first read, when I first read about this feature, I was like, well, they're a construct, but but constructs can be healed by mending. The mending spell does say it repairs a break or a tear in an object mm-hmm. you touch. Um, it can physically repair a magic item or construct. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't give like any sort of like dice. dice right. to, like, because this one, yeah. sort this, one, this, this one specifically, but this one specifically uses your hit dice. Yeah. And it says that you can expend a hit dice and regain that many hit points. So yeah. I mean, really, what we're saying is, instead of taking a short rest, you can take one minute mm-hmm. to recover. One minute per hit die instead that you want to recover instead of a full hour. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. I mean, and that's really the only difference. 
frankly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but not taking an hour break, right? You know, right. Is, oh, yeah. can I mean, be super. You, if you only yeah, have, you only have ten minutes, five minutes, mm-hmm. yeah. and you want to do five hit die yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean that's that's nice, but it's not well, short like rest. You so gotta, crazy. Short rest, and it's not over the whole party either. It's just just this character. And somebody's got to have the mending spell. Right. Which, right. I which mean, a lot of people have the mending. Spell. You could, you could very easily get it as any any like arcane spell cast. Well, could you cast the mending spell on yourself? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, yeah. When you're now you're just a little turd. You're like, on a yeah, short rest, you though, like, freaking, uh, turd. yeah, your bastion. <laughs> the, other, the other benefit to this is that on a short rest, you're supposed to be sitting still or ha- doing relatively like mm-hmm. little to, mm-hmm. to not exert yourself. You can do the mending spell. You could be walking and do it on the short. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Uh, but there are a few other things about being an auto gnome that are great. Um, so you're small, as we talked about. Your walking speed is 30, which I think is typical. Five Although, more. That's actually it's five, five more than a small creature. Brown was 25. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you get a little bit of a boost there. Gravity. Uh, you you have armor casing instead of the typical armor thing that Warforged get, which means that while you're not wearing armor, you have a 13 plus dex. Uh, it's basically armor. like mage armor yep. or you get your mage armor immediately dragon, or a monk. Or still, I mean, 13 mm-hmm. plus dex, it's, you know, it's, it's, still it's good. fairly common in, with other races. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're also built for success, which means you get bless. You get this bless is, a couple of times per day. Uh, basically, cool. you can add a yeah. d4 to any attack roll, saving throw, ability check mm-hmm. you make before the or after, after the roll is seen, but before it is declared. Uh, determined. Declared. Success, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and you can use that a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Mm-hmm. Pretty typical. So that's just cool. a little extra blast. Self blast. That, that's that's quite good. Yeah, I would say that's the strongest ability I mean, that they get. Yeah, D four yeah. can make Easy. the difference. Yeah, that's and like a, that's like a bardic inspiration, but they can't bards can't give it to themselves until yeah, later. Yeah, I so. mean it's only mm-hmm. a D four. But still, proficiency bonus times so nice. per day. It, it makes it easier to stomach things like when you're doing. Um, that's right. Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter. Sharp shooter. It makes it a lot easier to want to do sharpshooter when you yeah. know you got a D four that you're rolling yep. with it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I wouldn't call it overpowered, but I think it's I think it's borderline. I think it might be the strongest ability of any of these races. So what you're saying have. is you're going to play this. You're going to say you're gonna that hate you're, it. you're you're half <laughs> elf, so you can get the elven accuracy plus the D four. <laughs> I've played <laughs> artificers and had a lot of fun. With no, them. thank you very much. This is true. Um, I'm just trying to persuade him. That's all. Yeah. Beyond that, Suggest. though, you get sentries rest, which is typical <laughs> for it's mm-hmm. pretty much the exact same. It's worded a little, little differently than Warforged. Uh, you get specialized design, which gives you two tool proficiencies of your choice, which is nice. Very uh, cool. And then mechanical nature is actually a little bit different than the Warforged. Um, mechanical nature says that you have resistance to poison damage and immunity disease, which is the same, mm-hmm. and and you have advantage on saving throws against being paralyzed or poisoned. Now the oh. Warforged one doesn't declare paralyzed; it That's only says poisoned. Oh However, the the difference is uh, this says that auto gnomes don't need to eat, uh, drink, or breathe, but it doesn't include sleep and cannot be magically put to sleep. So auto gnomes mm. can be magically put to sleep, unlike Warforged. Interesting. Pa- Paralyze doesn't come up that often. Not too from often. Enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But neither I mean, does sleep really. When when yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when it does, it's that'll be super so helpful. devastating. Yeah. Yep. I mean so. that, that that is interesting, especially with the sentries rest stuff after that. That it doesn't have any of those those the same as the Warforged. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. All in all, I think it's a really cool race. I yeah. I mean, it feels very much like. The tiny warforged. Let's yeah. let's go to the. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Hadozi. Hadozi. Yeah, Hadozi. Hadozi. I don't know. That's yeah. That's I'm doing that one. So, so let you me read. read. It? Yeah. Hadozis are people with simian features that long ago adapted to live among the tall trees of their homeworld. They are natural climbers with feet as dexterous as their hands, even to the extent of having opposable thumbs. Membranes of skin hang loosely from their arms and legs when stretched taut. These membranes enable a Hadozi to glide. So, uh, yeah, Dallin, tell us about the Hadozi. Okay, so the Hadozi, you are a humanoid. Mm-hmm. And you are medium or small, you choose. Uh, you get 30 feet of walking speed, and you have a climbing speed that equals your walking speed. So you can be Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong. Yes, you can be Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong, but you're also a sugar glider. So there's that. <laughs> um, you're, you have dexterous feet, which allows you to take the use an object action as a bonus action, mm. which I don't know comes up that much, and so it feels kind of wasted. I mean, but when once when you in need it, it'll be nice oh, to yeah. be like, oh, I'm just bonus action, do whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a throwaway, I think. Yeah, but I think I think uh, I don't use it very often 
Like I don't I don't put you guys in situations where you have to decide between attacking and do using I, an option. And I mean, like, what's the difference of make an attack? Yeah. What's the dis- difference of like interaction acting with an object and use an object? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. Free I, think, I yeah. think I think I think use an object is more like activating something rather than just like interacting with an object, right. which is like opening a door. Right. You yeah. know. So. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, This one's pretty cool, though. Glide. If you are not incapacitated or wearing heavy armor, you can extend your skin membranes (laughs) and glide. Whenever you do so, you perform the following aerial maneuvers. When you fall, you can move up to five feet horizontally for every one foot you descend. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. If you're falling... Now I'm seeing sugar. For every five feet you fall, you're moving 20 feet. Or 25 feet. Similar to like the Simic hybrid. Simic hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like that could come in handy if you need a quick escape or if you're trying to get somewhere far just as climb up as, and jump yeah, off as and, long as you can go yeah. start from you know makes yeah. you really cool if you're on like a pirate ship or an airship or yeah, something, yeah you know, for like sure the crow's nest mm-hmm. be able to get down. around pretty quick um and then when you would take fall uh, or damage from a fall you can use your reaction to reduce the falls damage to zero that's so that's right. huge monks everywhere. to zero yeah, yeah. to zero not, not like by like, so many you can't die I from fall, falling i fall 500 feet yeah. and at the well, last just, second i just you just extend it it's, it's, like it's the parachute. dumb trope where it's like it no no matter how far you fall if you hit the parachute right at the end yeah. you'll be fine so this is good for healers too this is war be a logic. cleric and then mm-hmm. all of your friends will fall and die and you'll stay alive yeah. and then rise them up it's fine as long as you have lots of diamonds yeah. they just got to bring in the war zone logic I, we're, <laughs> we're branching out i wouldn't yeah. be surprised if this got changed not not that it's so overpowered because the reality is, like, how often are you taking falling damage in a campaign? A couple times, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Not when a ton, those who have feather but fall and other things. Like, like, to, yeah. z- to completely to zero is insane. Like, it, yeah. it just, it just, yeah, I mean, it maybe feather like fall, reduce it by half or something. Slow fall ability, which I don't think they get until like level five or something like that. This it's gets it automatically. Like, uh, you reduce some of the damage, but yeah. this is just yeah. Like, yeah. zero. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Trump. you're a monkey, sugar, sugar glider, space creature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, nothing special. I, I, I guess, yeah, like, even though reducing fall damage to zero is very strong compared to other similar type features, it's they, not don't a, they don't get a lot else, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, you get a climbing you speed c- equal to your movement speed, though, which I yeah, think is that's pretty cool. crazy. Like, You can use an object as a bonus action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. cool. That's it. That's nice. So let's jump over to the Thrykeen. 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 All right, Preston. Thrykeen. The three cream. Have insectile features. Gross. And two pair, pairs of arms. Gross. Whoa. Their bodies are encased in protective chitin. They can alter the coloration of this carapace to blend in with their natural surroundings. It's a chameleon cricket. <laughs> They're very big in the uh, dark sun setting. That, uh, we kind of mentioned that last week in the future yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But they are... They're kind of like they look m- almost mantis-y, you know. Yeah. They've got the, the big mantis. eyes and the the, the mandibles it's and whatnot. Very Rick and Morty. Yeah, <laughs> like all the, the yeah. cricket or whatever guys. So the Thrykeen, they are interestingly enough, they're a monstrosity, mm-hmm. and so like when it comes to any creature that's supposed to be targeted oh. by a humanoid spell. So there are three work. so races here that are not human. So mm-hmm. hold monster works, but hold person does not. Yep, right. Yep. And so this, your size is a medium or small, so you get to choose when you select it. Uh, your speed is 30 feet, so nothing cha- crazy there. Uh, th- this one was kind of interesting. If you're playing a character like a rogue or something that needs to, to have rely on stealth a little bit more, it has a chameleon carapace. So when you're not wearing armor, um, your base armor class is the same, similar to the to the auto gnome. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the, it's your armor class is your 13 plus your dex mm-hmm. modifier. Nice. Um, and, but as, as an action, you can actually change the color of your skin, so you can like blend in with your surroundings. And um, it gives you advantage on your dexterity and stealth checks made to hide in those surroundings. So if you like you know, running into darkness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's pretty um, strong. Yeah. Pretty Speaking of darkness, you have dark vision, so mm-hmm. uh, you are able to see uh, up to sixty feet. Nothing special or nothing crazy there. Um, but you do also get secondary arms. So the two slightly smaller arms are below your primary arms. Um, and essentially, what's happening here is that you can um, those the secondary arms you can um, carry light weapons. Uh, you can't use a shield. 
which is important mm -hmm. on here. So you can't like have a, a shield down here and then weapons up here. How cool would it be to have like a shield plate that pops out and moves <laughs> because your arms, your tiny right? arms are holding extra it. ones. <laughs> Maybe if you're using both of them to hold the shield, then mm -hmm. that's allowable. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. And the, the one of the arms. one of the things that we were kind of talking about that could be a potential benefit to this is grappling. So yeah. like if you wanted to grapple somebody and then attack them, yeah. mm -hmm. this is where that would come. Right, because play. you know it's like okay, well I have these two extra arms that can, but it doesn't. It's not giving you any extra attacks or anything like that, no, right? No. But yeah, it requires one free hand to grapple. Yep. So you could potentially grapple two enemies, right? And then be stabbing them with your short swords, like with your little arms, mm -hmm. right? While you've got two enemies grappled. Hmm. You could technically grapple them with your tiny arms and then use whatever weapon you want. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I guess if you can't hold a shield, well, well <laughs> actually, it, that's I no, agree that's with a good point. It doesn't specify that that the, the right. baby arms correct can't be used to grapple. <laughs> correct, yeah. your T Rex arms. That's mm -hmm. fair. I mean, it's the, that's the same as the Simic Hybrid, because the Simic uh -huh. Hybrid is the same thing. You can use it for a grapple, but you can't attack with those hands. Right. The thing about the, the Simic Hybrid is, though, like, you kind of have to choose. Like, if you exactly. want them to be grappling appendages, great. That's, that's all they exactly. can do, right? Um, you and so, grapple arms or And so you're a little arms. more... You're a little more restricted. Right. That said, you it does give you the benefit with the Simic Hybrid of being able to um, make an attack and then grapple as a right. bonus action. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Another well, but, another similarity would be like the Luxodon with their trunk, right? Mm -hmm. It's 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 a nerfed appendage. Sure. Yeah. So um, the other thing that these guys have, they have sleepless re revitalization, so they don't require sleep. Uh, they just basically need to not exert themselves. Nobody needs stay sleep awake. anymore. Seriously, it's what like why sleep? That's why I play sleepless. boring humans because I'm nobody, tired. Nobody <laughs> wants to play humans. Um, the thing that's interesting about these guys is they don't uh, they don't speak. Usually when they're talking, they're using their mandibles and clicking and like doing weird things with their antennae. <laughs> and um, here they use Thrakian tele telepathy, so mm -hmm. they'll actually use a, a type of telepathy to speak with the creature. They do; um, it has to be within someone you can see within 120 feet, and the creature doesn't necessarily need to, to share the exact same language, but it must be able to understand at least one language. Mm -hmm. So you can give it like impressions that are yeah. Basic, so basic like, that's that's basically this can't work on animals. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That said, like. And I know that it's, this is largely utility, but I think about all of the like spells that this just yeah is better than right because like, now you can yeah. just go message stealth it and just, mm -hmm. uh, message like, you have to understand uh, it. What's the what's the and you have what's the, 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 the tongues the, the uh, comprehend comprehend languages, languages yeah. right? Like uh, monks get a late ish game feature that lets them do this. I mean, this is just like yeah. you can communicate with everybody all the time as Sending. long as they can speak a language yep. and you can do a it language and that's the important part is right. that a language it's not the language yeah. that you understand because right. with like i think with and uh, message silently and it's yeah, huge. Exactly. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, and but message and sending, they have to comprehend, they have to the, language. comprehend the language. So and like, all you have to do is stick yourself in a teleportation machine with a fly and then you got it. <laughs> that, <laughs> like, that's the only thing you have to give up is your humanity. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I mean, they seem pretty powerful. I will never play one because <laughs> they're creepy. Ew. I mean, yeah. if I was in full yeah. costume, I can maybe get into it. But <laughs> I, I personally <laughs> think they are fantastic. He's gonna look over at Colby and be like, <laughs> "I, I am fully in for any sort of Yuck. like weird, crazy, non-humanoid esque looking yeah. creatures." This is men in black. Know? They're those weird, yeah. skinny things, yeah. and mm -hmm. they're all like homies. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like, I, I, call me crazy, but I like my D and D to be. D&D. You're crazy. I like my D&D to be like so elf, <laughs> dwarf, human, <laughs> like so very high fantasy. What's the best know? ice cream flavor? I didn't, really, vanilla. I didn't realize I was such a conservative, but yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, vanilla. not vanilla. Vanilla is the no, only good flavor. Not. No, it's butter pecan. It's Duh. elf. It's pistachio. <laughs> oh, it's fair. It's fair. Elf is, elf the, best. is the best flavor. No, I, I, think, I think you're kind of hitting the nail on the head here, where <laughs> these races are only going to interest you if... The the primary D and D races are not your thing, right? Like if you're if you are if you go into D and D and you're a Tolkien fan, you're gonna want to play dwarves, elves, humans, orcs. You know your standard races, and then from there, kind of depending on your fantasy preference, you sprinkle in a few more and, and a few more. And if you're like me, you're you're pan fantasy as it were, <laughs> and you you you're just like throw everything in there, yeah. whether you're a monstrosity or the next one. Yeah. Which yeah. I am very excited for the, because the gif. Yes. 
So this is this is funny actually. When I first was reading about that, I was like, GIF. And is we were GIF talking, or GIF? I was like, is it GIF or GIF? <laughs> <laughs> and then later it says, the GIF are split into two camps concerning how their name is pronounced. <laughs> half of them say it with a hard G, half with a soft G. <laughs> Disagreements over the correct pronunciation often blossom into hard feelings, loud arguments, and headbutting contests, mm-hmm. but rarely escalate beyond that. Yeah. So anyway. Subtle nod to uh, popular I think, culture. I think I'm going with GIF. It's Same. GIF. It's GIF. GIF. Although I do <laughs> heard it like here. peanut butter. Yeah. Um, but that is a J. So these are... You can have your giraffes. These <laughs> these are... Um, Not giraffes. <laughs> these are hippo people. <laughs> they have hippo heads. And they... Yeah. That's now we're just like now we're in like kitty land territory. Like hey, this okay. is Madagascar no, no, too. Sorry, you get to you, play a hippo or a zebra. You guys can't say sorry. this. Or a this lemur. This has been around since D and D advanced. I know. Okay? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it just to me it, this would never interest me. If you want to play it at your table, yeah, go for yeah. it. They're like awesome. That's yep. so cool that they're including stuff. We like got Luxidon, Leonin. Yeah. 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 Some There's some already weird we're stuff just out going there. Around the, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, we're just going just around the zoo, places. and we're bringing in... On the plane, ostrich. All the, yeah, that'll be next. Oh, or an emu. That'd be cool. I mean, there are plenty of bird folk races out there. Shout out to the Humblewood campaign right. setting. And the Kenku. And, and the, the Kenku. And the Aracocra. The, yep, yep. You know. Okay, so with the GIF, you're a humanoid, you're medium, 30 feet walking speed, and then you have what's probably... You have a swimming speed equal to your walking speed, too. Oh, right, right. You can swim. And crush watermelons very easily. <laughs> yes, not not explained in the actual right, traits, but, but very important yes. for gift culture. Just with your <laughs> jaws. Yep. Um, and then you have the damage dealer feat, which is most interesting to me, but a little underwhelming, I think. <laughs> like a hippopotamus in a crystalware shop, you are naturally adept at damaging things. So when you roll a one on a damage die for a melee attack, it has to be a melee attack. Um, you can re-roll the die and use the new roll. You can do so no more than once. So, turn. Great Weapon Very Master cool. for free. Similar yep. to Great Weapon Master, but it works on any melee weapon. That's which is cool. Nice. Now, Great Weapon Master lets it, you re-roll ones and twos. Right. And, it's, and you say it's melee weapon, not like just melee attack, right? Mm-hmm. Melee attack. Have, what about melee, melee spells? Attack. Melee attack. So just melee, melee attack. attack. Okay. I mean, Although, there are some spells that are, well, they're considered spell attacks. So yeah, yeah that's, okay. no. Um, so, yes, similar to Great Weapon Master, but asterisk, Great Weapon Master, probably the weakest of all the fighting styles. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, like, no, for sure. You're, you're averaging um, like one or two. Yeah. You, on Depending on the enemy armor class, depending on what weapon you're using, you're getting about one extra point of damage yeah. on average right. um, from Great Weapon Master. This is going to be slightly less, actually, because you, you don't get, get to re-roll ones and twos. Damage. You just get to re-roll ones. <laughs> Look out for my next character who um, is a GIF and a Great Weapon Master. <laughs> a Great GIF well, Master. That, that's, no, that's going to be that's going to be the next like quick ruling question, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, do these stack and how do they work together? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you also have the hippo build. You have advantage on strength-based ability checks and strength saving throws. So you know, for grapplers and stuff, especially, that's pretty nice. Um, in addition, you count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity, the way you can push, drag, or lift. We've seen this on a lot yeah. of other races mm-hmm. as well. That's cool. Um, and that's pretty much it. So so nothing like super stand out, I don't think. Uh, I think. I think Wizards of the Coast, if any of you are watching, think in their heads that being able to re-roll ones on like damage is like, like a awesome. really good ability because like they put it in stuff there's like a feat for it the savage attacker feat right mm-hmm. there's the great weapon master and and i don't know maybe i'm wrong but i think people who like crunch numbers I, this, are like, yeah it's, are it's, it's not for the number crunchers it's for the people who get really pissed when they critically fail yeah. so written, they can be like ah wait okay well, it's, that's written for will will it's written for the will yeah. yeah. yes so, exactly there you go i think the gift <laughs> were specifically put in here as a fan yeah. requested one. It's fan service. Because it feels very much like last minute. Like, they've only got, like, two yeah. different things. It's and quick. They're kind of, yeah, it almost feels like people were like, hey, if you're going to do Spelljammer, you better put the gif the in there guys. because they're, like, one of the coolest things. They were on the cover of the Spelljammer, if yeah. I remember correctly. Um, so I think they were just kind of included last minute as, like, like okay, oh, they're yeah, big, they're strong. Get... Yeah. Advantage also, strength checks, sure. Because I love, I love me some big races like yeah. I love the Loxodon I love Goliath yeah. like I'm it's really weird because I like I like the really big races and I like the really small races really small. too like 
Yeah. You're, you're an anti-mediumist. I mm-hmm. am yep. a mediumist <laughs> at <laughs> heart. <laughs> but I tend to make my characters tall, and I think it's because I'm so damn tired of not being able to reach the top <laughs> shelf <laughs> at the grocery store. And so I'm like, in my fantasies, I can. <laughs> I play short people all the time, or talk really. No. I like playing big characters because I like showing that they can actually do things. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, let's get to the last one, the so weirdest of all. Of yes. Them. So, do you remember uh, back when we talked uh, on Unearthed Arcana for yes. the Undead, mm-hmm. where they started introducing this concept of different mm-hmm. types? And they included ooze as a type. And I said, I want to play an ooze creature. And like, how would that work? Somebody heard you. Yes. And voila. Mm -hmm. That's proof that Wizards of the Coast is watching your videos. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Chris Perkins. Yeah, we sure it was you. We love you. Um, (laughs) Plasmoids are amorphous beings with no typical shape. In the presence of other folk, they often adopt a similar form. But there's little chance of mistaking a plasmoid for anything else. They consume food by osmosis, the way an amoeba does. They excrete waste through tiny pores. Ew. <laughs> they just sweat. Ow. They Ow. they they poop out their pores. That's, come on. <laughs> Are you sweating? Um, no. Right. No. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, they breathe by absorbing oxygen through another set of pores. Good. At least they don't mix them. And their <laughs> don't limbs breathe, are <laughs> strong and flexible enough to grasp and manipulate weapons and tools. Mm-hmm. Although most plasmoids are translucent gray, they can alter their color and translucence by absorbing dyes through their pores. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's cool. just like it's like pouring some dye into yeah. yourself. I feel like I'm going to be blue today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sad. <laughs> puts on a new sweater and all the red mm-hmm. bleeds in. And, yep. Oh, man. All this right, Corey, would be cool what can you tell us about in a horror okay. setting to do the thing? Yeah, yeah. This is that. Yeah. I love. I, if I was going to do a thing, I'd do a shapeshifter or a change. Uh, right. Yeah. But uh, I do. I do love the idea of the plasmoids and everything that they have with them. So your creature type is an ooze. So again, you're not affected by uh, non-humanoid spells. In fact, I think there's some other spells that like specifically target target uh, like monstrosities and stuff mm-hmm. that they don't yeah. right. as well. Um, your medium or small, you choose the size, and I would say. It says you choose the size when you gain this race. I would personally, as a DM, I'd be like, pick flubber. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe like after a particularly harrowing thing, you lose like half your body mass, and yeah. you know, and now you're small again, and there's a tiny you running around somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, or you eat, you eat. Yeah, it becomes the big bad. And <laughs> yep. Like, oh no. Uh, your walking speed is thirty. Uh, you can you are amorphous, which means you can squeeze through a space as narrow as one inch wide providing you are wearing and carrying nothing, and you have advantage on ability checks made to initiate or escape grapples, which I think is huge for any like grappler build. strong build. grapplers yeah. in, in this UA. Yeah. Uh, you have dark vision, natural. Uh, you can hold your breath for one hour, which, you know, that's, again, it doesn't typically come up. Usually, if you have any adventuring party that knows that they're going underwater for any extended <laughs> period of time, yeah. they'll pick up like a cap of water breathing or something. Uh, you have resistance to acid and poison damage and ad- advantage on saving throws to resist poison. Mm-hmm. So similar to most constructs. And then uh, you can shape yourself. Uh, if you're not incapacitated, you can reshape your body to give yourself a head, one or two arms, one or two legs, and makeshift hands or feet. Or you can revert to a limbless blob, no action required. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I kind of forgot that you could do one hand and one foot, which sounds hilarious, but okay. Um, as a bonus action, you can extrude a pseudopod that is up to six inches wide and ten feet long, or reabsorb it into your body. You can then use the pseudopod to manipulate an object, open an unlocked door or container, or stow or retrieve an item from an open container, mm-hmm. or pour the contents of a container out. It's a little um, flubber. It's free mage hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it can carry 10 pounds. Yeah. Is that mage hand or is mage hand only mm-hmm. five? I can't remember. Uh, it's mage like hand, but you've got to put it back in your body yeah. after. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. prison mage yeah. hand. Yeah, and also, it, it basically, because it says <laughs> here that you can manipulate an object, I wonder if that counts as interacting with an object as a bonus action. Like the Hadozi, oh, yeah. which would be interesting. Yeah. interesting. But you don't get very much that's like super exciting. Yeah. It's just a bunch of stuff that a lot of, would have. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of flavor. flavor. Yep. The right. most flavorful and, of them and all. And some utility, mm-hmm. you know. Squeezing a rogue a would be cool yeah. to be a rogue. Would be really cool. rogue. I, I honestly think the the race that I w- or the class that I would want to go with if I was going to do um, this would be a monk. Because if you've got to be mm. squeezing through things and you can't take anything with you, uh, right. then... Right. Better punch being stuff. able to, monks, yeah, monks don't have armor or weapons anyway. Yeah, yeah. well, that's yeah. depending on the monk. When I play a monk, I don't have any weapons. Or Kung Flubber is what we call it. <laughs> Kung <laughs> Kung nice. That'll be the coming of this episode. You can't. Yeah. Perfect. To a theater near you. I, yep. I, I, I'm okay with this one. This yeah. one's kind of fun. Like, mm-hmm. 
there's a borderline like sci-fi stuff going on, but I think it's fun enough you can really adapt it anywhere. Well, and slimes yeah. like for me, it's like they, growing up yeah, with like Dragon exist. Quest and then the other ones. Like slimes for me has been around as long as my fantasy obsession oh, yeah. has. Mm-hmm. So it's like right. I'm okay with slimes. Yeah, slimes are definitely fantasy. I wouldn't play one. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't play yes, one. But are they okay for you? But to I would have love to have one at my table because you've never watched. Uh, so I was reincarnated as a slime. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't or know. Osmosis to me, Jones. To or me, Jones. like Flubber? To me, there are. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I would be fine if somebody wanted to play one. Yeah. Okay. It's just like I don't want to play like Amorphous. a bowl of Jello. <laughs> bowl of Jello that has its own mage hand. <laughs> I, I played this game to escape from Utah. Why would I want to play Jello? <laughs> yes. Don't put it in your castle. That's good. Why do you have shredded carrot in you? <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, That's my I'll shredded it mage out hand. My pores later. Oh, <laughs> too many, too many Utah inside jokes here. Yeah. Like the two people from Utah got. I think it. we have yeah. a few. Yeah. Anyway, that was um, for you. I'm excited about the, the, the Unearthed Arcana. I'm always excited about Unearthed Arcana. I'm curious to see kind of how it changes between yeah. now and whatever ends up getting released. Um, I think I think the none of the races, like in the past maybe, um, or I, I should say contrary to some Unearthed Arcana that we've seen come out in the past, none of these feel particularly overpowered. In fact, I would say a lot of them feel a little on the weak side, which is fine. Um, you good. know, better to better to I think start you know here and then on release. It's like oh, guess what? They're a little bit stronger. And everyone's yeah. like, yay! Mm-hmm. Instead of like so get everybody the excited night, and then take it all away. Where yeah. it's like yeah. on every single attack you get to add a d6. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. It's once per turn. It's like oh, why did I use that in my build that I posted a video on? So as far as optimizing goes, what would be the best and the worst? Like if you were stuck with these races as your choices. For an optimized character, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of different factors that go into that because it's like, what type of character am sure. I playing? But uh, who is well, the clear go, winner? You got to go with some sort of grappler. There's so many good grappling feats in mm-hmm. here. I think you got to go all with like strength based grappling. Um, yeah. No, it, the auto gnome. You think the auto gnome? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, with the blast. We step oh, into the zone. Z4. Yeah. Gnome. <laughs> I'm going auto gnome. I think the the weakest, actually, the auto gnome or the the thrycreen are pretty good, although. Combat wise, there there there's not a lot of strength there, but utility wise, they get they get a lot. Um, yeah. As for the weakest, I mean, I'd maybe go with like the GIF. I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, it's just the, the really all you get, other than like advantage on your grapple checks, which is not nothing. Rerolling. Yeah. Um, you know, just rerolling that one damage is just kind of meh. Boring. Um, but I mean, heck, plasmoids frankly aren't great like if you're trying to optimize for combat they don't bring a ton to the table yeah. but but plenty of flavor plenty mm-hmm. of utility plenty of fun yeah yep, yep. So. as much as i love them i wouldn't say plasmoids would be the the least optimizable yeah right. all right well that's the episode for the week thank you guys for watching love you so much um hope you have a fantastic day and hope you check out the rest of the content on the channel it, let's be honest if you're watching this you probably check out the rest of the content on the channel <laughs> and so yeah, thank yeah. you <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll talk soon and uh, take care. Thanks to you guys for, for, for being here as well. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thank you. See ya. Okay, Thanks, have a good one. Bye. Where we talk about um, other things that I'm going to remember how I actually start this program here in <laughs> just a second. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we Real. talk about... Uh, What's the other thing that we talked about? <laughs> How to well, optimize your game I'm just for fun. News because it's all about news today. Yeah. During episode 20, when I was doing uh, Trevin's vision uh-huh. thing and taking you guys through that, about halfway through, Colby turns and like coughs like three times and then he looks at the camera like, oh my gosh, why did I do this? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. I always, I don't know, I'm like a very phlegmy person. I don't know why it is. Especially if I'm talking a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And okay. that is going into the real at the end. The flemmy, the flemmy person. It's a new race. And I think that that is important with the spell, right? It's important to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Add that. Yeah, what's going in? Mm-hmm. It's important to burn. It is very important. It's right before you make the suggestion, because because then they're caught off guard, and now they yeah, do whatever exactly. you want. By the way, I would I would absolutely go on an Easter egg hunt if it were Easter nuggets instead. Easter nuggets. Gotta, get, gotta get my chicken. I would nuggets. Absolutely not go on an Easter egg hunt for Easter. Yeah, nuggets. they're dirty, still in the, grassy they're, no, nugget. No, they're still in the plastic egg. It's just a nugget but, inside. But they're cold. I don't man. want or any sauce. bunny nuggets in my basket. <laughs> no bunny nuggets. No bunny nuggets. <laughs>